Man. Chris Otis Floyd was named the CFL's Defensive Player of the Month for September with 21 tackles. He finished ahead of Jamal Johnson, who had 27 tackles. I asked Floyd, how'd you do it? He said, well, I also had three sacks, but many others believe that Floyd does it because when he makes a play, he wants the entire world to know that he made that play. Now, they're two very different guys. Floyd loves to talk. Jamal wants his play to do the talking. But when I asked Floyd who he would nominate as the Ticats Defensive Player of the Year, he said without hesitation, Johnson. He says he's the fastest linebacker in the league. League. and in typical Floyd fashion he says he reminds me of me when I came into the league <laughs> and the most active linebacker tonight for Marquis Norton with seven tackles Johnson with three Floyd has one and this defense has been stout Otis at the bottom of that pile with another stop well it, it also gives Marcel Belfe a, a, a huge chance and opportunity here because they, they've they've been playing well in the fourth quarter as well but this is what reminds you of Hamilton Tiger Cat defense, right? It gives Marcel Belfe a chance to work Quentin Porter, win games on defense, and allow that young quarterback to grow. Second and ten, big play for that defense. Looks like Calgary's offside. Cutting down to Copeland, who I think was the culprit. Let's find out. Copeland with the catch at midfield. But is it coming back? Yeah, he did look like he was a little hesitant when he got off the line of scrimmage, as if he may have jumped offside. So they'll bring it back, and it will be second and 15. Offside. Calgary number 80. Five-yard penalty. Repeat second down. And there he is. Step and a half across the line of scrimmage before the snap. Here comes the pressure. Burris gets away. No, he doesn't. Brought down on a good defensive play by Kahari Long. So the penalty, then the sack, the first of the game for the Ticats. Well, it's just relentless effort from Kahari Long, who's going to work up the field on Jeff Pilon. And he's blocked pretty well initially, but after Otis Floyd had a chance at him, Long kept going and tracked him down from behind. So a big series for the Hamilton defense, and the Ticats should get the ball back in good field position here. Burke Dale's the kick that hangs up in the wind. And they'll have to cover it with Dale's coming downfield, and look at that field position and a no-yards penalty to boot. The CFL on TSN is brought to you in part by Rona, proud sponsor of the CFL, Rona, doing it right since 1939. Best starting position of the game for the Ticats. They trail by two, 8.09 left, and they have a first down at the Calgary 43-yard line after the short punt, five-yard, no-yards penalty. Marcel Belfay's team looking for its second road win of the year. They have the worst road record in the league at one and four. But they have played Calgary tough. Eastern teams have played Calgary tough. The Stamps three and three against the East. And Cobb, three to the 40-yard line. Well, yeah, you're, you're, you're right, Chris. But when you're a team that has, that has struggled for a long time, as the Hamilton Tiger Cats have over the last few years, you, you have to sort of chip away at it. And so what you want to start to do is win at home. You know, get that home crowd fired up, and the Hamilton Tigers have been able to do that more this year. Then you then you go and you look at the road game, but you look at their last three weeks. Calgary a win, Montreal, okay, that was their bad one. That was one they put that tape away. And now they're back and competing against Calgary again. Second and seven. Here they come the blitz, and they get to him. Charleston Hughes punishing Quinton Porter and knocking the Ticats out of field goal range. You know, Chris Jones has just decided he's going to send the house defensively, and, and a little surprised the Hamilton Tiger Cats haven't seen this and, and tried to attack this part of the field. All the receivers here, as you this blitz comes, 
All the receivers here for Quentin Porter are down the field. They were four receivers straight down the field on deep routes, and in fact, deep routes that were going to the outside, so he had no chance to get that ball out of there. Set a looking for the pin, going for the corner, and it'll bounce into the end zone, and a single point makes it a one-point game. But that's a mistake. That's a, that's a Nick set of mistake. He wanted that out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. They can keep the advantage, field position advantage, the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Get their defense back out there. They get a two and out. They get the ball back with a chance for a major and a good field position again. And that gives it back for the single. Tried to be too fine with it. Mm -hmm. Bit off a little bit too much. So the Stamps lead down to one. Again, working into the wind of the fourth quarter and a very stout Hamilton defense. Take to Reynolds and pressure here. Burris has to throw it away. This play has been one that's worked real well for Calgary for the last three or four weeks where they get their tight end, Teo Johnson, and at times it's been Nick Lewis, but they'll run all the play action and then they'll get Teo Johnson, just come off here. And this has worked real well for him. A little open spot in the field, but watch how Hamilton reacts quickly and covers down. Johnson comes off the line of scrimmage, and then Sandy Beveridge steps up and takes away that pass. So Burris has to throw it out of bounds. Second and 10. <laughs> Underneath, Reynolds. And he's not gonna get very far up to the 37. And the punt team comes on. A big two and out for the Hamilton defense. The fans again restless here at McMahon. But, but again, it, it just sort of emphasizes how important it is to execute that one punt from Nick Seta. Because if you take what has just transpired over the last two or three plays, if that ball's out on inside the 10-yard line, well, Hamilton is getting the ball on Calgary's side of midfield. Dales, McDaniel, 43, and brought down across the 45-yard line, so decent field position. Tomorrow, the NASCAR chase for the Sprint Cup heats up as TSN brings you live coverage of the Price Chopper 400, beginning at 1 o'clock Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific, live from the Kansas Speedway. So Quinton Porter down by one. Five and a half left, fourth quarter. Trying to move four points back up on Winnipeg, and that ball batted down at the line. Charleston Hughes got it. And, and he just keeps making plays, well, does he? He keeps making plays, and the Calgary Stampeders keep loading up the line of scrimmage. The Hamilton Tiger Cats have, have not been able to find an answer to this yet. Shannon James on the outside gets some upfield penetration and Charleston Hughes knocks it down. Defensive battle last night at BC Place and we got another one here. Second and ten. More time. Porter will step up. Near midfield lunging for a first down and he is going to be less than a yard short it would appear. Well, this is going to be decision time for Marcel Belfe if he is that close. I mean, and Marcel's going for a walk out onto the field. He wants a close-up look at this. Well, it's important because he has to see exactly how far he needs. I mean, if it's well inside of a yard, you want to think that your offense can get it, but you don't want to have a turn of momentum here and not get the first down on a third down gamble, and it's going to be, what, about a, a good yard. Because you're right, if Seta executes the punt properly here, they have them pinned They're against still the wind. Pinned. And, That's right. And then you've got that field position advantage. And and I think if you're the tie catch right now, you feel like you've got your, your you know you got your foot on them right now. You're you're starting to you've got that field position advantage, and you and you want to keep it. And the punt team's out there. That's as long as you can keep Henry Burris in check. Took a little off this one. 
And this one, oh. that hit a Parker Stampede. Picked up, Marcus Howell's got it. Flags down though, and it's gonna be of the 15 yard variety for no yards or not. Nick said a not a great kick. Well, he tried to take too much off at that time. From the bag. No yards. Hamilton number 47. 15-yard penalty. It is a 15-yard. And that's Sasha Glavik, the Pickering native. And it hit Shannon James with Glavik in that five-yard restraining area. Right off his heel, and Glavik is, is right next to him. That's that's the, didn't hit the ground first, hit his heel first. Valuable 15 yards of real estate, and a short kick by Seta. Reynolds, not much there. They have been stout against the run. Otis Floyd is there again. It's been another good fourth quarter for Greg Marshall. He does have the win behind him. He has the field position advantage. He's seen his defense turn the ball over a couple of times in that first half. Like Marcel Belfay, very patient. He said last week there's going to be hiccups. But it's how you bounce back, and the defense has done that tonight. Big second down play here, second and eight. Burris stands in, throws, and it's knocked down. Big play, Jeff Tisdale. He has an interception in this game, and that's his eighth knockdown of the year. Back in the secondary after missing last week with the flu. And, T and, and Tisdale had to get a ball call here because he's playing right up on the line of scrimmage on Copeland, and he's got his back to the plate. But watch how he must get a ball call. He turns around and knocks that out of the air in flight, and he really lets Copeland go. And to, to have the confidence to do that as a defensive back, and, and you have to know that you can get to that football or else you're in big trouble. Secondary has played aggressively and it's paid off. Rush flag down. Good kick by Deals. Another flag. Marky McDaniel brought down at the 38. So a couple of markers on the play. Quentin Porter has 320 left. Calgary with five consecutive two and outs. So that's how well the defense has done for the Tie Cats here in the second half. And now it's an official passing game slump for the Calgary Stampeders. I think we can make it official at three games now. Nick Lewis, a quiet night. Holding, Calgary number 46. Holding, Hamilton number 47. We'll replay the down, third down. Henry Burris had 197 last week in the win versus BC. 114 against the Hamilton Tiger Cats two weeks ago. So that's three weeks now since his last big game, which was 393 versus Edmonton. You often wonder if that Edmonton series, sorry, Chris, will, you know, how much it takes out of the Calgary Stampeders or, or both teams for that matter. Well, it's interesting, earlier on when the Stampeders were, were sputtering a bit, it, it seemed to be the defense that was the issue. The defense has been good tonight. The Ticats are pleased with that trade-off and penalties. They Absolutely. should get better field position, although Dale's with a good boot. But here's Marky McDaniel. Trying to get outside. Can't do it. That's just great cover by Charleston Hughes. That's a defensive end. And as it turns out, worst field position for Hamilton. 